curb extensions, bulb outs, or whatever you want to call them. These are how sidewalks should have always been designed. But when car dominance came along, seemingly all considerations for pedestrians went to the wayside. But the trend seems to be shifting. I think curb extensions are my favorite urban planning tool for pedestrians, so I thought I'd make a video about them. So I am once again going to be focusing on the city of Appleton, Wisconsin because, well, it's the only city in my area that is getting it remotely right. I think part of this is because I live in a part of the country where it's way too easy for most people to say, well, we're too cold to walk for a third of the year. Why would we invest in walkability? But me, you, and the city of Appleton know better. I promised myself I wouldn't admire Appleton too much in this video, so back to the topic of curb extensions. Let's start with car safety. Yeah, you heard me right. Let's talk about how they make it safer for the average car driver to use a road with curb extensions. Curb extensions are well documented for improving visibility on roads and lets drivers know more explicitly when a pedestrian is queuing up to cross. Are you ever in a situation where you can't really tell if someone's about to cross the road? Well, this is not really an issue with curb extensions. It makes it a lot more obvious when someone is planning on crossing the road. With curb extensions, pedestrians are able to queue up a lot closer to the road than with other crosswalks. This makes pedestrians a lot more visible than with normal crosswalks. You see, with normal crosswalks, the ability to see a pedestrian can easily be blocked by parked cars, trash cans, and even trees. This is especially true for children. Extending the crosswalk a little bit into the road also makes pedestrian right away way more effective. Here in the state of Wisconsin, all other traffic must yield to pedestrians in a crosswalk. Just believe me when I tell you this law is rarely respected in most scenarios. But in intersections with curb extensions, there is a lot more compliance with this law. Because pedestrians are closer to the road and in turn closer to your car, it seems drivers are more inclined to be more courteous. Another reason this may be the case is because curb extensions have the ability to subconsciously slow down drivers. So it's possible because drivers are already going slower, they find it less inconvenient to let a pedestrian cross. I'll talk more about the speed benefits in just a second. Because another benefit I notice curb extensions have is their they're more effective at giving pedestrians the padding that cars typically do. Work with me here. If a car driver has a metal cage keeping them safe, the closest thing to that for a pedestrian is the concrete of a curb extension. Basically, when a pedestrian uses a typical crosswalk, they are more exposed for more amount of time. With curb extensions, they are given more time that they're protected by the concrete. So I look at curb extensions as a part of the whole pedestrian protection system. I mean, if there is any. Putting this together with improved visibility of curb extension users, pedestrians are safer, and car drivers have less guesswork to do. That's a win-win. And a double win for pedestrians and anyone who likes to reduce the risk of their life being cut short is the curb extensions' ability to slow down traffic. As mentioned a minute ago, the perception of a narrowed roadway can deter drivers from speeding, promoting safer driver behavior. Many studies have shown that the wider a road is, the faster drivers go. When a road is narrow, or more objects are closer to the driver's car, the driver will subconsciously slow down. This is why highways have wide lanes with virtually no objects like trees on the side of them. Curb extensions are a great way to narrow a road while also providing other benefits. Other benefits like improving accessibility for everyone. Look, cars are prohibitively expensive. If you can comfortably afford an automobile, you are frankly privileged. For most of the working class in the United States, cars and their associated costs are a ball and chain, and they're only getting more expensive. I'll definitely explain this more in another future video, so make sure to follow to catch it. Aside from the cost of cars, even if you can afford one, you still may not be able to use them. People with disabilities like sight impairments, epilepsy, and even diabetes may not be able to drive cars. While expanding public transit would obviously be better, a good bridge to one day improving public transit is making sure when pedestrians hop off their trains and buses, they aren't stranded in a car hellscape. But back to the current issues, curb extensions will help people without automobiles now. The reduced travel length from one side of the street to the other helps everyone cross the road in less time. Take for example this crosswalk in Appleton. This one can't be more than 8 feet wide. Compared to this crosswalk in Green Bay, it has to be at least 30 feet. The Green Bay intersection was very, very uncomfortable to cross. 
especially coming from the Appleton area, where there are a lot of pedestrian quality of life improvements. For example, in Appleton, the crosswalk signal turns on a couple seconds before the light turns green. This lets pedestrians start crossing the street before cars do, which helps with the yield to pedestrians law I mentioned earlier. I'm so used to these improvements in Appleton that I was caught completely off guard by the signal in Green Bay because the light turned red before I even finished crossing the street. I couldn't believe it. I don't remember the last time that happened to me in Appleton. Anyway, back to the length of crosswalks. Curb extensions make pedestrian journeys shorter, which, needless to say, makes them safer as a byproduct. This is another aspect of curb extensions that also benefit car drivers as well. The further someone has to walk from one side of the street to the other increases the amount of time you have to wait for them. With how impatient drivers seem to be getting by the day, this is a benefit I would love to hear anyone disagree with. A couple decreased crosswalk lengths with the benefit of improving visibility, and I'm sure you can see how this is an amazing improvement to transit infrastructure for everyone involved. Now, I try to be as objective as possible. That's hard because I am strongly against car dependence. But to end this video, here goes a speed round of the complaints that I see people have with curb extensions. These are complaints that if you use just a little bit of critical thinking, you would realize why it's a dumb complaint. But just in case you don't know why it's a dumb complaint, let me explain. They take away street parking. At a maximum, they take away four street parking spaces. But they are often at traffic intersections and only take up space in places where you wouldn't be able to park anyway. If they are in a place you might be able to park like this one in Nina, I promise you that at least four cars worth of people might just consider walking instead of driving if there were to be an event where every parking space counts. On a normal day, there are way too many parking spaces already for this to be an issue. By the way, just look at how amazing this one is. Not only is there a curb extension, but there is also a pedestrian island. That is a top tier crosswalk in my books. They increase traffic congestion. Just no, they don't. Like I said previously, they encourage more people to walk, which can reduce congestion. They also improve traffic flow because they reduce the amount of time for pedestrians to be in the crosswalk. So if anything, they do the opposite. Accessibility issues. <laughs> this one just made me laugh. The argument goes that someone who uses something like a wheelchair are at a disadvantage when they drive somewhere because they won't be able to get on the sidewalk. Let me just show you this curb extension in downtown Nina. Cost concerns. Some people think that it's too costly to build curb extensions and <laughs> wow. I'm sure the same people who have this concern have no problem spending millions per mile adding another lane on a highway. They most likely also have no problem when the DOT builds a new huge pedestrian hostile roundabout. Or at least not for the cost reasons, because honestly no one likes roundabouts. Besides, if curb extensions can prevent one person from being injured or hit fatally by a car, then I say spare no expense. No amount of money is too much when we're talking about human lives.